Okay, we working now. Now the sounds on. Now y'all can hear me, I think. Okay, we working now. Now the sounds on. All right. Now y'all can hear me. Like I was saying, I'm about to go get me some drink. Gonna let the, the people join the stream and then we're gonna start this game off. So I'll be right back. So y'all can hear me now, so that's that's a good deal. Alright. Be right back, folks. Give me five minutes. Not even. Give me two minutes. Let's get it cracking. I got my official glass. See what I said at the bottom? Pocani No. Official FSU glass, baby. And the official drink. Of Polk Canino. <laughs> that crown peach. Let's pour some and get this thing. Cracking. I know it's a little bit later on the East Coast. Like nine o'clock, so I mean, hey, whatever. We in here. Let's go. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do the dollar thing. All right. What jerseys are we gonna go with? You know the dang. with those I like those away jerseys with the red the retros let's see what else they got first uh, so we'll go with these I'm kind of not those yeah I'm kind of digging these but I'm gonna go with the shamrock gold helmet what is that Us. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're going all garden. Let's go. Big game. Ah, number four versus number thirteen. Let's go, baby. If you're in here watching, let me know. Shout me out in the chat. Let me know you in here. See, three. Three's good enough. Three's good enough to get it started. We'll see how many people decide to, to join in. Look at them rankings. Offensively, we 50. 
points per game. First, 540 yards. That's first. 342 yards. That's second. 36 in rushing. We've got the best offense in the country, man. Bar none. Defensively, we're not even half bad. Uh, 19th in points. 42nd in yards. Pretty bad in the passing game. But dominating the running game. Here's your best players on the team. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Here we go. Ooh, and it's raining. And it's raining. It really makes me mad, man. Notre Dame should have came into this game undefeated. Should have been undefeated versus undefeated. But no. But no. Skip all that. Skip the introductions. Let's get to this game. Thirteen versus four, baby. This is a big game right here. We got a big game. Boom boom. Start on defense. <laughs> All right, this is what we do. We're going to start off. We are going to go man to start the game. It's usually how I rock. I start off in man coverage and go from there. That's what we're going to do. That's how Adam Fuller likes to start off. We'll go man and we'll make adjustments from there. Ian Book. Oh, he didn't get the sack. Oh, he barreled down on him, though. He forced the mess up. We'll keep this uh, quarterback spy. Oh, Tate. Bro, dude just running wide open. Come on. Hit you with blitz. I ain't blitz yet so far this game, so. defense right there. Let's go. What's the field goal, baby? We good. 
good first series on defense. Gave up a little bit of yard. Ben don't break. A little bit of some bend, don't break. Uh, but we good. Look at that game. Shootout. Yeah, I know it's kind of late on the East Coast, so you know, guys might not join the stream or whatever, but I'm still live streaming because that's what I said I was going to do. And it is what it is. Ain't nobody sleep at no 9.30 anyway. They up. Let's go, Lord. Get this thing cracking. There's Laybourne, who's no longer on the FSU roster. Laybourne got the boot. And he runs for no yards. Dennis, thanks for joining, homie. Good to see you. And I almost do a pick, Dennis. You're messing me up. Big game, Dennis. Big game here. Already whooped up on Kings. Ooh, Keyshawn staying on his feet. There we go. Purdy stood in there and threw a bullet. Look at this. Ugh, and he got hit. Threw a damn dart. Chubba for Heisman. Let's go. Good solid runs. Dennis, Dennis, I ain't cheap. <laughs> I ain't cheap, man. We just had to whoop up on y'all. Just like I'm about to do. Oh! I had a guy too. I'm about to do these these Irish. Jay Sean with the good little screen. Web running it. Try to keep that tempo. That's touchdown. Ooh, that's too much air on it. That safety was able to recover. I thought Chubba had him one. Damn it. See if we can 
tie this thing up. All right. All right. Three, three. That game. How does Oregon even win this? Washington's got a solid squad, though. Go back playing some good defense now. Let's go back playing some good defense. Let's see what Fuller gonna dial up on defense. Ooh, Gainer, Gainer with a pick. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Hot route. Let's see what we get. Man, hit. Hey, man. Put the word out there that I'm live and we in a good game right now with Notre Dame. Offensive line is still terrible. Touchdown. Let's go, Warren Thompson. Let's go. Touchdown. I'm trying to win a natty, bro. We're going to win a natty this year. Just letting you know we winning a natty. Sante! Supposed to have that. Come on. Come on, man. Asante's supposed to have that one. There you go. Defense is too nasty. We're just too nasty. Another day might get blown out in this one. I'm gonna bring a blitz. I'm gonna bring some pressure. Another day might get blown out this game. I'm just not. I'm not feeling like I'm facing a tough opponent right now. See, I'm just just not feeling like I'm doing, you know, I'm not I'm up against the real challenge. Jason, right up the gut, right up the 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 the, the yam yam. Now we're gonna go to play action pass. Terry, boy, I try to tell y'all, boy, that dang Chubba Purdy, Chubba. Ain't nothing to be played with. Be in the zone. Layborn, who we won't get to see this season with the carry. Recently dismissed off of the 
team. Unfortunate, but FSU will thrive. And Chubba took this thing in for the touchdown. Untouched. Notre Dame's not a challenge. Miami giving me a bit of better game than what Notre Dame doing so far. Boy, Chubba's a beast. He's unstoppable. Chubba for Heisman. See that? Long cut. Clemson keeps on trucking. That's going to be the next big game, it looks like. Number one team in the nation. Clemson versus undefeated Florida State. Michigan loss. We're just going to man them up. At this point, we're just going to man them up and see what they do. Be damned. Tony Jones. Tony Jones Jr. out here running hard. Let's go, Emmett Rice. With the hit in the backfield. End of the first. And it's been pretty much a domination. Ugh, gainer. I don't know what I want to do. We'll go with a zone blitz. Let's see what we can do there. Uh, good play. Zone blitz is probably the wrong call right there. The hole in the zone was just too big. Come on now. Come on, buddy. What are y'all doing? Come on, buddy. All right. Nobody's guarding the middle of the field, man. That's crazy. Just date and dunk this the way all the way down for you. Shoot, I got the ball.
What up, Tad? Out here, you know, playing, playing these fighting Irish. Number 13 versus 4, man. Trying to stay undefeated after whooping up on them canes last week. Trying to whoop up on the fighting Irish. Running that thing, this game. Jay Sean Corbin. 15 yards of carry so far. Boy, that offensive line still kills me every time. Still kills me every single time. Ooh! No, Purdy! I'll be damned. Damn it! We might have ourselves a little game here. We tackle Jesus Christ. We were breaking five tackles. Bro, you don't just sling dirt off you like that. Get out of here, bro. No blood. What's going on? Here, got my hands full with these dang Notre Dame. I went for the pick, and you saw that was a bad move. All right, tie game. Let me take, let me take me a swig. Turn Telly in the building. What's going on, brother? And here fighting with the damn Notre Dame fighting Irish. I think I'm gonna go back to a run game. The run game was working pretty well till I threw that damn pick. They got a block, though. Man. That read option be working, boy. Try not to cheese it too much, but it's pretty effective. Let's go, Helton. All right, quick little screen page. Just trying to get the ball in the playmaker's hand. All we're trying to do, get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Trying to say James Blackman is better in this game. 
Oh, I just threw another pick. Oh my God. Y'all done came in here and started and, and, and jinxing me. Came in here and jinxed me, man. Let me stop paying attention to these comments. Ooh, fumble. Come on, get the ball. Ah! I got tightened up on this pass. And Chubb about to lose the damn Heisman race. Throwing two interceptions in the first half. No way we give up for third and 20. No way we're going to give up a third and 20. You better not be running the clock. We're going to call a timeout. Okay, we're going to call a timeout. <laughs> yeah, man, y'all see him turn over here jinxing me and stuff. Man, come in here talking trash about Purdy and jinx him. Ain't that something? Oh, they got a screen. There we go. Good stop on the screen. Get the ball back. And we get the ball at halftime, so we got a chance to go up two scores. But what was that? Warren Thompson just stops running on that route. That could have been a pick. Jeez. I got plenty of time. I'm not too worried about it right now. Got plenty of time. We are Florida State, baby. Who we got over here? Do a hot route. Got to do these hot routes. A little bit, but not too bad, not too worried. That's a pick. I saw it. He just didn't put enough oomph on it. Oh my god. Uh, three interceptions in the first half, man. What in the hell is going on? Bruh. Bruh. Wow. Wow. Wow.
They don't want to see me winning. Bro, you saw how that long that one stayed on the clock? Man, the time should have ran out. Boy, I tell you. I try I tell you. Whatever, we're going, uh, we'll go down by three and a half. We get the ball at halftime. Ain't that some shit? Let me refill my cup, man, because right now, I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now. Yeah, whatever. Man, that one stayed on the clock for like five seconds, turn. You saw that, man? Clock should have ran out. I think I would just really focus on running the game. Maybe the weather got something to do with the way Purdy throwing the ball today. Now we can't get no run blocking. What y'all thinking? Thinking these shallow crosses might these shallow crosses might work out right here. I'm going five wide. I'll get Jordan Young or Warren Thompson. I'm getting one. Ah! <laughs> Boy, we eat out a first down. Let's go. Ooh. Warren Thompson deep. Uh, let's go. Back in it. Safety bit hard. You bit down hard for something. Play some defense. Let's go. They should have dropped that. That should have been incomplete, but whatever. Sag, look at that. Emmett Rice? Yeah, let's go. You just blitzed him. Oh, yeah, you went un untouched. Yeah. Untouched. Good stuff. All right. Let's get these boys off the field on third down. And I think by doing another blitz.
Let's go. They keep calling these screens, man. I keep chopping these screens down. Turn say we getting the number one point guard. Championship coming next season. He crystal ball to Duke. He crystal ball to us. Duke not even in the top three. In his top three. Is he from Florida? Where are you from? I mean, hey. Teams are liking, uh, uh, players are liking what Ham got going right now. So uh, that's, that's always exciting to see on that basketball tip. What the hell was that? They tried to get me with a fumble, man. Well, this game is something else. The ball just squirted out. That's crazy. They do not like to see me be great. This game is kind of tough so far, man. Don't matter. I don't care if you're from Iraq. <laughs> the reason I asked where you're from, because, I mean, that explain who's in this top three. Sometimes. Basketball's a little different with all these AAU camps that go on across the country. Um, but sometimes that could explain why he's not even interested in Duke. I mean... It is what it is. Let's go. Yeah, no, man. It's Notre Dame. You see how they trying to they trying they've trying to find ways for them to screw me on this Notre Dame game. They're trying to find ways. It's just not working. Corbin running that thing. Corbin running that thing. That's what he's going to do this season. With Laybourne out the way and a few young guys behind him, man. As long as Corbin can stay healthy because I think that's the only. Let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I almost broke that one for the touchdown. As long as Corbin stays healthy, I think you're going to see a hell of a running back in Jay Sean Corbin. I really do. And he should have scored on that play. And now the web will take it home. Let's go. Back up and at him. I be having so much fun on these streams. I don't just, just be wanting to do just one game, you know? We'll see who I play next. And, uh, depending on who I play next. Might stream the next game. Let's keep this defense up. FSU did, um, they did kick two other players off of the team recently. At least I read they did. I think there were a couple former three stars. Uh, let me see if I can find that. I do recall reading that, though. Let's see. Uh, don't more retake. Let's go. I'm over here looking for stuff. And uh, good news for Miami fans. They are trending for five-star corner Jay Sean 
for Jason Marshall. That is good news for them. Another one of those, the Palmetto boys that they're trying to keep home. I'm trying to find some of the players. I can't find it. Just know they were a couple nobody players. But it does free up some more scholars. Which is why I bring it up. Turn is really excited about the, the basketball season, if you don't know. He thinks FSU is almost all but guaranteed. Man, Warren Thompson has been killing it. This game is getting ugly, folks. I'm sorry if this game is boring to you. Uh, but this game is ugly. As far as Miami goes, uh, they're doing good right now. I'm going to say this about the Hurricanes. They go out there and they go 6-7 and seven again, you're going to see a lot of decommits. If this COVID-19 situation calms down, I think you're going to see a lot of decommits. If they go out there and they play good football, Miami, they might keep some of these guys. So don't want to make this a Miami thing, but, you know, Man Diaz is recruiting fairly well. Um, as far as we go, the only thing that I saw, which was a little bit disappointing, is Amari Harvey, after calling Florida State his dream school, seems to have, now the, the article was a paid article from like 247 or something, so obviously I'm not subscribed to that crap, so I'm not going to pay to read no article. But I think Auburn is like the trending team for Amari Harvey right now. Oh, look at my King Dent in the building. Which does man, we killing these boys. We I might owe y'all another game just because this game is getting out of hand. Um But yeah, I think Amari Harvey is trending for Auburn for whatever reason, not too sure. It's, it's very interesting to me that you call a school your dream school, yet you don't, you know, you, 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 you have more interest in other schools. It is what it is. I want guys that want to be here. I like Amar Hari. The good news is Terry on Arnold is still very much in the mix for Florida State. Florida State. Uh, uh, is very much in the mix for Terry Arnold. Dink Jackson is another one uh, trending for Ole Miss, but I think that's more so FSU not recruiting Dink is hard. I think they were kind of more focused on some of these other safeties. And yeah, I'm 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 about to We out here killing Notre Dame. This game isn't even competitive. Keyshawn balling. Warren Thompson balling. Jay Sean Corbin is balling. Chuba got three touchdowns, but he also done throwing those three picks, so it ain't been the greatest of games for Chuba. <clears throat> no room for Dink. He going... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They uh, They not really... Pursuing Dink Jackson anymore. Uh, they, they, which you know it is what it is. I thought maybe they would um want to put Dink in as like an outside linebacker type, but the staff don't isn't really interested in Dink. So that's him. And then Amari Harvey with some disheartening news. But again, if you don't want to be here, man, we'll find plenty of players who want to play for Mike Norvell and the boys. Good news, of course, is Marius Mims pushed his. This is huge news. This is, I think, this is more significant than I think people realize. And Marius Mims, he's the number one offensive tackle in the entire country. He was set to commit in August. I think. I think it was set to commit like August fifth or something. 
it was it was recent. And uh he had a top six. Well, the rumor is, so here's the facts. The facts are he's pushing his recruitment back all the way to, I believe, October. And he dropped Oklahoma completely out of the top six, so he only has a top five right now. Those are the facts. The rumor is Florida stays the team that got him to push that recruitment back. Yeah, I got you. Uh, dial up. I got you. This was a boring game. Um. So, the, but the rumor is that Florida State is the team that's getting Mims to push that recruitment back. That Mims want to say he wants to see how Coach Atkins' offensive line looks. And I'm telling you right now, if Florida State offensive line looks competent, it's man. There's a great chance we land a five-star number one overall offensive tackle. I got to believe that. At first, I didn't think we had too much of a shot at Mims. But the fact that he pushed his recruitment back is huge. That is huge news. I think if I'm telling you, if we play football and the team looks, that offensive line looks average. I'm talking C grade. I think we can land Mims. I think we can land them for sure. Let me see what we got. Turn say you think Diaz is gonna have Miami looking good? I don't. Not necessarily. I think. I think it's all. I put it like this. I think. If you be honest about it, Miami always plays very good defense. The problem with Miami the last few years has been, offensively, they've just been really bad. Oh shit! That's okay. This game's over. But that was some BS. Um. So, yeah, Miami's always played fairly decent defense. If decent to really good defense, actually. Offensively, they have not been very good. If this new offensive coordinator they got is the goods, like some people seem to think, I don't know. Maybe Miami can look halfway decent. I'll believe it when I see it. Right? I'll believe it when I see it. But if they look decent... Those, some of these guys might stay committed. I think if they're the same dumpster fire that they were last year, like, I think you're going to see a lot of decommitments from Miami. Two years he has looked like Taggart. I get the optimism. Got to be delusional. Yeah, turn said we get Mims. I think, I think it's, it's a high possibility we get Mims. High possibility. But I think... Mims wants to see how the team looks first. So as long as the team looks, as long as the team looks, you know, pretty decent, yeah, I think we have a great shot at Mims. Um, he visited again this week. Are we talking about Mims visited at Florida State this week? Did he? I didn't know about that one. They lost NFL. They did lose a couple NFL linebackers. Uh, but I, they still got the best def- they start, they got the best defensive ends in the country, arguably though. But they got probably the two best rush defensive ends in the country. Just to be, if we're being honest, I'm not gonna sit here. And, you know, I don't like Miami, but I ain't gonna sit here and lie about it. So you lose some NFL quality linebackers, but hell, you got NFL quality quality defensive ends. So you kind of trade off there. I think I think honestly, honestly, I think. Whoops. I think defensively, Miami won't fall too far. The question is gonna be. Um, offensively, is De'Aaron King the goods at all? That I'm not too sure of. I guess one thing to 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 do all that stuff at Houston in the Conference USA, you know, it's another thing to come to the ACC and think you're gonna do you know the same type of thing. So I'm not too confident uh, in De'Aaron King, but you know we'll see. You will see. Mr. Polk, that offensive coordinator from Miami came from Conference USA. The ACC is a different reach. Yeah, that's what I was just saying, old blood. I was just saying the exact same thing. Now, to play devil's advocate, our head coach is coming from Conference USA. So, we can't, right, we can't be too, like, hypocritical here. But, no, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, SMU... You know, solid little, solid little program, but I mean that Conference USA is different than 
than what you're going to get here. Now, I'll say this about Mr. Mike Norvell. We saw Mike Norvell against a Penn State team put up a lot of pretty good points. Um, I always revert to that Penn State game when I talk about Norvell because I thought Penn, excuse me, I thought Memphis had the better coach football team. I thought they executed better. Penn State just had the better athletes, and you saw that by the end of that game. Memphis just couldn't keep up with the athletes that Penn State had, right? So that's why I give Norvell a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. I think with the athletes he's going to have at Florida State, I think you're going to see a, you know, a really good Mike Norvell coach football team. That middle is wide open. Turn. I might put the backups in. What y'all think? Y'all want to see the backups? I might just throw the backups in here. Try to make it interesting. You should move up in the rankings in this game. Yeah, we number four. We, we need to hit the top three. We get the ball one more time. I'll throw Blackman and company in here and see if we can get a touchdown on the board with James Black. But Notre Dame just came in the Tallahassee and got embarrassed. Mr. Norvell has an ACC champion. Yeah, he does. No, he does. He he won. He won the. Uh, he sure did. No doubt about that. I'm, ooh, get him off. Ah. Big game James said we should be excited about Norvell last night. That's actually positive coming from big game James because he don't usually say too much positive or he hasn't said too much positive about Norvell thus far in his, in his small tenure. He usually kind of dismisses a lot of Norvell. You know. So that's actually you know, a positive thing to hear from him. Uh, I think we should be excited for Norvell just from the standpoint of having a, a, a organization and a solid uh, a, a base. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to see Norvell cut a lot of dead weight, man. I'm just being honest with you. Like, a lot of people are upset about Laybourne, and I'm like one of the few people that just, just wasn't upset about Laybourne getting kicked off the team. It just wasn't didn't bother me at all. Like, cut the dead weight, get the dead weight out of here. So, uh, when I see little things like that, to me, that's positive. That's a positive sign that, you know, you're either going to get with the program or you, you, you're going to get out of here. So, this dude trucking everybody. Turn, say, I know that's, yeah, that's, that, that's actually a lot of uh, good things coming from Big Game James. Because, like I said, he hasn't been really on board with the Norvell era thus far, so. If he's starting to endorse Norvell, that's a, that's a solid sign. I think Big Game James is a little sour on the Willie Tow, the Willie Tow, Taggart. Like a lot of guys, man, and I was one of them, if we're just being honest. A lot of us wanted to see Taggart be great. There's a lot of us that really wanted to see Taggart be great. I know Dion did. Prime wanted to see him be great. Big Game James wanted to see him be great. A lot of us wanted to see Taggart be great. So a lot of people are still a little salty. Um, but ultimately, I think FSU made the right decision. You didn't, want, you didn't want to keep Taggart for another year and just have this program in an even bigger hole. Right? So ultimately, I think we made the right decision. But a lot of us really want to see really do good things. So I think that's why it's been a lot of reluctancy on the part of North. Like, a lot of people are on this wait because they're like, man, y'all fooled us with Taggart. We're not going to let y'all fool us with Mike Norvell. We got to wait and see. So I think that's the mindset of a lot of Florida State fans at this point. Got a lot of backups in the game right now. I mean, if I can show you guys a few. You got McClendon out there, Woody the third, Glenn. <clears throat> Isaiah Bolden. Okay, we forced the fourth down. Taggart equals Diaz. Yeah, pretty much. Two guys who can recruit, 
but they really aren't very good coaches. That, I mean, yeah, they're pr- much of the same. I think I think you're right. Uh, we'll see though. See, we'll see if Diaz is smart enough to get out of his own way. That was Taggart's problem. He couldn't. Come on. Okay, they scored. He couldn't get out of his own way, and that ultimately cost him his job. Taggart just couldn't handle the situation. Yeah, I think Taggart just couldn't, again, get out of his own way. I think I think you brought in a guy like Kendall Bryles. And I think those two just never got on the same page as offensive coordinator and head coach is supposed to be, right? Supposed to have some kind of chemistry there, especially two offensive guys. And I honestly believe though both of those guys just had different, different philosophies on coaching. So... Here, I'm going to throw these backups in for the last minute. Let's see if we can get Black a touchdown. I'm so excited to see the schedule date for FSU. Frank, what's going on, homie? Glad you could join the stream. So I think the schedule is going to be a little tougher than what we initially thought. I mean, Going to Notre Dame. I think I think we're the only team in the ACC that has to play Clemson, Miami, North Carolina, and Notre Dame. That's a fairly tough schedule, if we're being honest. We don't get the... I think... What happened? They dropped Syracuse, which we knew was a win, and they dropped Wake Forest out of our schedule. So, man. And they replaced them with some pretty tough games. But that's a double-edged sword, right? So even though that's a tough schedule, I think that could also benefit Florida State in the long run. If we play good against this schedule, the sky may be the limit once we get back to normal football. You know what I mean? So a lot of good things I think to look forward to. I think it's a tough schedule, tough schedule, but I do think the schedule is manageable. Definitely think the schedule is manageable. I'm excited to play Sam Howell, I'll be honest with you there. I want to see us the same way we have we when we played Bailey Hockman, um, and he, he went when he went to NC State, when he transferred to NC State. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to see how we... Oh, Black. I'm so excited to see us put Sam Howell's dick in the dirt. <laughs> I'm ready for that game. Harold, what's going on, man? You think playing Notre Dame early is better than playing them later? Obviously, playing them in South Bend in, in November is not a good... That's a good point. Yeah, playing them... Later in the year, in that cold, I wouldn't call a plus for sure. Uh, yeah, you probably want to play them early, just for the simple fact. A lot of a lot of places, a lot of schools, they haven't really had that practice, right? Practices and springs and all that stuff has been thrown out of whack. A lot of teams are going to need the first three, four games to really, uh, 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 you know, identify. Or uh, get an identity, get their mojo, get their chemistry in, in order. Um, and it probably would serve best to play Notre Dame early. Because you definitely don't want to play a Notre Dame later in the season after they've kind of got their stuff together. And it be 20 degrees in South Bend in November and you're up there for, yeah. Good point, Harold. I, I, you probably want to get Notre Dame out the way fairly early. I agree with that one. Replace the Gators for Miami at the end. I could see that, Frank. That, that makes some sense since the Gators, I, since the whole entire SEC wanted to duck their non-conference opponents. Um, I, I can I can see that one. You know. All right. Let's see what this next game is. We're gonna finish this game up. We'll see what this next game is, and uh, we might do one more game for tonight. Dude, this game was kind of boring. I'll admit that one. 
pretty much dominated. I thought I thought thirteen versus four would be a better game, but I guess not. We can definitely keep this football talk going. Eight consecutive wins. Warren Thompson had a big game. I don't think we play Clemson next. If we do, I don't know if I'm going to stream that one. I kind of want to give Clemson its own stream. Not even going to lie to you. But I might. You know, the hell with it. Shelby did not have the greatest of games. Jason Corbin had a pretty solid game. Warren Thompson was balling. Tomorrow Terry was all but kept in check. Defensively, man, we were fairly, fairly good defensively. Dent had a pick. Demory Tate had a pick, and Gamer had a pick. All right, enough of this game. This game was a letdown, folks. I am sorry. I didn't expect it to be that easy. It made it interesting early, but it got pretty easy in the end. Sit here and wait. What other big news came out? Really, the biggest news are just the schedules and thirteen was a good game too, uh, Frank. Thirteen was. I think I had. I had. Man, that was so long ago. I think thirteen, I had, but I probably lost it. Who knows what happened? And I am playing Clemson next. So I went from Miami, Notre Dame, to now it's the number one team in the nation. Look at this, guys. We're going my Cle Clemson. Number one. We'll see what we end up ranked. We'll see if we stay four or if we move up in the rankings. But right now, it is number one versus number four. And I kind of don't want to play this game. I kind of want to give this game its own live stream. Let's check out some recruiting. See if we signed anybody. We did not. Eight consecutive wins. Man, we got Clemson. Tell your friends right now. Get them on here. Say we about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson right now. Number one. No, they Clemson dropped the number two. Who's number one? Let's check. Uh, let's check some of this stuff out before I decide. If I'm going to play two versus three. Look at this. Um, top 25. Top 25. What do you guys want? Y'all want me to play Clemson right now? You want me to hold on? I don't know. Man. Bama. So Bama shoots up to number one, which makes sense. Yeah, because they beat. They demolished LSU 45 to 20. And Clemson played Wake. So that makes sense why Bama would get the jump. Two versus three, Clemson versus Florida State. And look at the rest of the top 25 here. Washington, Mississippi State, 
LSU, Ohio State. The other Chubba. Let's see. Let's see here. The other Chubba Purdy brother, Brock Purdy, had a pretty solid season. Any other Florida teams ranked? Not one other Florida team ranked. Frank's like, yeah, I skipped that one. I think I am, Frank. I think I, I think I might wait, man. I don't know. Depends on if anybody else comes in here. If we can get these uh, views up, we might play that game. Let's tell you the media. And then we'll see the BCS rankings. So right now, we got three in all the rankings. That's a tough one, man. Look at this Heisman watch. Purdy probably dropped in the Heisman. No, he stayed steady. Still number two behind Najee Harris. Najee Harris right now is 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. How is that better than Chubba Purdy's? 27 touchdowns, six interceptions. Oh, and his rushing yard. Come on, man. Purdy's got a total of, what, seven plus eight? 17? Purdy's got a total of, what, 30? What is that? 27 plus 8 is what, 38, 37, something like 38. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, everybody's telling me to give this one its own its own stream. I think I will. I think I'll give that one its own stream, folks. That's a big game. So we'll just kind of look at some of this other stuff. If not, if you want to go ahead and leave, by all means, thank you for joining in. I'm going to look at some of this other stuff. We're going to do some recruiting, and then I'll probably cut this one out. Let's take a look at some of these awards, though. What we got? Who's some of these award finalists? Purdy's number one for the Maxwell. Purdy's number one, number two for the Walter Camp. The Bitmeric's going to right now. Akeem Dent is number one for the Bitmeric Award. That's actually surprising. It's actually surprising. Followed by Briggs. Wood Bay's up there. Asante Samuel. That defense is nasty. Briggs. Dent. For the Nagruski. Purdy's number three on the O'Brien watch list, semi-finalist. The Walker. If you don't have a guy up there with the Walker, which makes sense. The Bolitnikov. Why do I feel like Terry should be higher? Terry has more yards than this guy. But this guy has four more touchdowns. Hell, Stevenson should be number one. Look at them yards. This guy got 13 touchdowns, though. We still, we still got work to do. Terry will get up there. We'll get Terry up there. He didn't have that big of a game this last game, so that kind of hurt. I think that hurt Terry. The Mackey. It goes to tight ends. We don't have any tight ends here. No. The Outland. That's offensive lineman. We damn sure ain't got no old lineman in the race here. Briggs, Durden with six sacks at that defensive tackle spot. Coop's got four sacks. Yeah, we good. Got three finalists on the Lombardi. What? We don't have any finalists? That is actually surprising to me. We don't have one finalist for the linebacker. With Gaynor and some of these guys, the way they've been playing, man. Thorpe. Dent might win a Thorpe. Three finalists on that Thorpe Award. Then the Groza. And the guy. Which nobody cares about. Ristranomanu's on the guy. So that's cool. But there you have it. There you have the awards. Stats. We'll go over some stats. Then we'll finish off with recruiting. And like I said, I'm going to get that big game its own stream.
Laybourne, Jay Sean, Purdy, all with 400 yards. All with at least five touchdowns. Webb's got six. So we run by committee, as you can see. Still got a lot of good running numbers there. Warren Thompson, Terry, Helton. Same thing here, man. Everybody eats when it comes to receiving. Defensively. There's the stats. Let's finish up with some recruiting, folks. Finish up with this recruit. Let's see what we got to do on this recruiting tip to nab some of the big guns. We got a couple big fish still out here that we're trying to get. As you can see, Mario Williams out of Plant City. <clears throat> we're number six for him. Lawrence Seymour, number one so far for him out of Miami. Let's just go by position. We got Eric Mitchell, quarterback out of Georgia. He's a little pros, you know, uh, project prospect, number one for that one. We got two running backs committed. John Harris out of Utah. Don't ask me how we got a four-star out of Utah. But you see he's out of Utah, and he's a 68 overall, and he's a four-star. So, yeah. Then Brian Carter out of Georgia. And we're going to... We got another four-star here, Michael Miller. But I don't even know if I want to even... Eh, out of Washington. We'll, I'll throw 300 points on him. Can't have enough running backs. As you can see, Payson, we're number three for Payson. Tight battles here for these receivers. And then we're number two for Justin Carpenter. Clemson leads that one. Clemson leads this one. So we 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 gotta we gotta try to get this one. I really, obviously, you want these two guys. Uh, no tight ends. Tackles. Signed one tackle. And we got this three-star out of Apopka. Seymour's the big fish, though. Seymour is the big fish. Out of Miami, that's the big fish we want to get right there. I'm not too worried about centers. Trying to get this five star out of Georgia. Look at that speed at DN, man. Look at his size, 6'7", 239. Alex Matthews, number three right now for him, so we're in a battle with South Carolina and Georgia. For Alex Matthews, we signed one so far out of Florida, Michael Tolbert. Nothing too special about him. As a matter of fact, I just scouted him and he's a bust. So, yeah, we need Alex Matthews. Not really tracking any defensive tackles. We're, we are leading for Steve Carter. And we're second for Paul Frazier. Just some depth guys right there. Not taking the linebackers. Uh, not, yeah, not going to take any linebackers. We got two corners. Glenn Thompson and James Allen. Two solid guys, especially Glenn Thompson. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Strong safety. Yeah, not taking any one of these. And then we got these athletes. We signed Ryan Bell. Let's give him the rest of our points. Um, I want all of these guys right here. Reggie Green, five-star out of Louisiana. DJ Keys, five-star out of Plantation. We number one for that. Somehow UMass is number two. Have, don't ask me how. And then again, we competing with A&M for Dale Davis. 
And then Josh Cooley. Out of Mulberry. Out of Polk County. And uh, we still got a ways to go on that recruitment. That recruitment's nowhere near being finished. There you got it, folks. That was your recruiting. Um, that's it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do the Clemson game. I've thought about it. Not going to do it right now. We will give the Clemson game our own live stream. So that one can be as big as it possibly can be. But that is the game. Two versus three. And this your boy, Polk County Noel. Uh, yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Y'all stay classy, Seminoles, and I'm out, yeah. Damn. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one.